Hi, I am Dr. Ellie Wee, an assistant professor of cello at Hayes School of Music, Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. Welcome, and I am very pleased to meet with you on this uh, virtual platform. Masterclass is a class where students observe a student performing and getting a lesson from a master teacher and that provides a very unique uh, opportunity for students to learn uh, from the peers playing and the tips given by the master teacher. Unfortunately, today's session is not a master class but a presentation. Um, I hope that many of you can attend uh, uh, Canon Music Camp next year and experience the real master class with me. People often ask when I started to play the cello and what made me to pursue the music seriously. Um, my first musical instrument was piano and I started it when I was four years old and then I switched to cello when I was eight. Uh, one of my mom's friend's daughter played the cello and one day my mom took me to see her uh, play and uh, when I saw her play the cello, I really liked it and wanted to play the same instrument. So ever since then, I've been playing. Um, then I wanted to be more serious about uh, cello playing uh, when I went to this concert uh, of a very famous uh, Canadian cellist named, his name is uh, Gary Hoffman. He came to visit uh, to my high school to give a concert and give a master class. Um, and when I went to his concert, I was blown away by his wonderful uh, sound. It was very rich and gorgeous and I just decided there uh, that I want to play like him. Um, and then I came to the U.S. to attend uh, New England Conservatory Music, uh, to pursue music. Um, and I was teaching also, and uh, I realized that I enjoy both playing and teaching a lot. So uh, I wanted to uh, find a profession where I can do both. And I'm very fortunate that I can do what I love to do. Let's discuss a few topics. Practicing during the summer. I always enjoy the summertime for practicing because we get a lot more time than during the school year. And I think having a routine is very helpful for us to be consistent with our practicing. So if you could set up a root practice routine, that would be very helpful. Um, I can recommend you to do uh, start with arpeggios or um, scales, one or two at least. Uh, and then you move on to an etude or technical exercises. Um, if a whole piece is a little too much, then you can just have few lines uh, per day and uh, what would be helpful uh, is you need to set up a goal uh, if uh, you want to achieve for that, uh, that sec section or that part that you are working on. It can be intonation or it can be rhythm or it can be uh, bow techniques but uh, you will really focus on getting those areas um, uh, mastered during your t practice time. Uh, lastly, uh, you can work on a piece of your choice. You wanted to play some pieces. This is the time uh, for you to just experiment and enjoy. And the next topic is practicing during the school year. Um, I would just do the same thing but add uh, orchestra piece, one or two orchestra pieces, and an audition piece if you are uh, trying out for an audition um, to your routine. 
Um, the next topic is care and maintenance of the instrument. The string instruments are very sensitive to humidity and 45 to 55 percent humidity is uh, uh, tends to be the ideal humidity level. You can use an AC or dehumidifier uh, to um, control the humidity level in the room where the instrument is stored. Also extreme cold or heat uh, is detrimental to the instrument. So keeping the instrument in a very warm place uh, for a long time, like in a car on a hot summer day, would not be a good idea. Um, also, keeping the instrument in a hard shell case would be much safer overall than in a soft case. The next topic is preparing for an addition. In advance, you can uh, try to research if there are any good recordings that you can listen to and listen to a good recording and try to uh, practice as much as you can. Um, when you come across some difficult spots, um, it is very important for you to realize those and so locate them and then try to practice uh, those difficult sections with more repetition. And the day of audition, try to play the, all the audition materials before uh, you go uh, for the audition. Scales, arpeggios, and required piece. And try avoid uh, practicing too much and too fast. The next topic is how to practice sight reading. Um, I put down time signature and key signature. Um, so once you receive a music, you'll see uh, the clef and then key signature and time signature. So uh, I would just look at the time signature and then count off a measure before playing. I find it helpful to hear the pulse with subdivision because students tend to play fast and hearing the subdivision really helps remedy this tendency. So um, you'll see this example of Petit Bure. It's in 4-4 four, four meter. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 beats per measure, right? But I want to hear the subdivision of this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so I want you to have this uh, one measure for nothing with this counting with subdivision 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and then you should be able to uh, play um, the key signature gives you which uh, key the piece is in so when you have one sharp it can be either G major or E minor um, and what you can do is um, you can look at the end of the piece and it gives you the key uh, so it uh, major 20 it ends on G uh, G chord so it is um, a G major rather than E minor so after that you'll kind of think about okay so G major with one sharp you can quickly go over the scale of G major like that. Let's examine an audition piece for junior orchestras, fifth through eighth graders. Uh, it's called Petit Bourree by Angelo da Prose. Um, first of all, I'd like to examine all the musical words uh, uh, used in this piece. Um, it's in moderato tempo and measure 20 uh, or 21 it uh, has deciso that means decrescendo and uh, at the end a dc alfine that means uh, da capo alfine uh, go back to the beginning and finish at fine um, uh, now, at the at the end of the piece, where the da capo alfine is, do you see the fermata? So basically, we want to hold on to that F sharp long. Uh, 
Also, uh, the last line, uh, second measure, it says crescendo poco poco ritardando. That means you're going to crescendo and poco poco little by little. And retardando, from that point on, you are going to gradually slow down the tempo. Uh, so, probably... <laughs> before you go back to the beginning. Uh, and I'd like to make a note that we should be able to play these chords well. The first, uh, the second measure, the D is held for three beats. So you have first three, me uh, three beats, so you are going to Hold that uh, D for together with these moving notes. Like that. Another example is one, two, three, fourth measure, same same thing. D is held for uh, two beats. So you play the chords like that. Um, second line, second measure, same thing. Same thing like that. Uh, another thing is playing this chord. This is forte. Um, when you have a three note chords, I usually tell my students to play the bottom two first. Like that, and then upper two. bottom two, G and B, relax, and then upper two, and when you go to the upper two, I would uh, try to go at the um, uh, balance point, instead of waiting too long, because this is not as strong as the balance point area, so... We want to be strong with the chord, so I would play a uh, slow bow and then quickly you go to the upper two. So the chord. stopping the bow and playing the staccatos. What you need to do is you need to stop the bow before the staccato marking is written. Stop. That way you can really uh, separate those notes. Before C, stop the bow. To correct one uh, one note uh, at measure twenty, the last chord is written C B G. Doesn't uh, doesn't sound right. I think it's a misprint. Uh, I should have open G instead of C. So open G B. So sounds much better, right? Like that. Uh, so, uh, always we are going to uh, keep the dynamic contrast. So, you can mark the where the piano is because we really want to make it piano. Uh, that's measure 13. <laughs>
is uh, J.S. Bach's uh, Cello Suite Number 1, Courant. I'd like to discuss two things. Uh, it's all about challenging bow techniques. Uh, the first example is measure 1, measure 4, measure 8, measure 21, measure 22, 29 through 30. Um, so Usually we start like in the middle, right? And then, and then we would run into trouble not getting all the notes right. So what would be the remedy for this? I would simply start in the middle, lot of bow, and then last bow here. In the upper half of the bow for that up bow. Same thing for four. You can just uh, move your bow. place to breathe um, and I think you can breathe um, at these measures 4, 8, 28 and 35 and little breath at 14 and 26 so like <laughs> example at the end. Thank you. 